We're closed. You two want. I wasn't expecting to show your faces in here for quite some time. Now that you've had that trouble with the old bill, you know, breathalyzing your customers, who better to turn to than your local friendly minicab firm, eh? Yeah, if your drive is anything like your card playing, I'm not sure I have a lot of confidence oh, in Oh, look, you. come on. All we're asking you to do is to leave a few of our cards at the bar there. Yeah, and we'll give you a pound for every customer you send us. How's that? That's going to make a lot of difference to our finance. And if things work out, we can talk about our account system. Another time. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. Sorry about that. There'll be more important things to worry about this morning. It'll settle down. Ashley's just a new broom. They don't even like him down at the station. So when he doesn't get any results... If he doesn't get results, some of the natives are getting restless. It might be an idea to settle some outstanding debts. As long as it doesn't look like weakness. People keep quiet about Mr. V because they know the alternative is going to get nasty. But a favour for a favour makes sense at the moment. That's all in hand. You look after your end of the operation. Yeah. I might visit Dickens Hill, see Den. I'd have thought that Mr. Watts was the least of our worries. But the police do seem to be wasting a lot of manpower visiting our friends at Her Majesty's pleasure. If they were to convince them that things aren't going that well out here, offer them some small inducement to cough up. Den is all right. He knows which side his bread is buttered. Look, he's never been in prison before. He's a small-time publican with a, a weakness for fast women and good living, neither of which he's getting at the moment. I don't think that makes him very trustworthy, do you? And remember who'd be first in the firing line if he were to start singing. But maybe it is a good idea. Pop down to Dickens Hill. You know how rumours start in places like that? I'd hate to think he was coming under any uh, bad influences. Hello? Oh, not on for business at Savile, what? No, I've got a visit, Governor. Oh, aye, the classy number. They say she was looking for a porter to carry a handbag in reception. I'll make up for that. I work hard the rest of the year preparing for the January sales. I'll have lots of bargains in all departments. See your bit? Who? Cruella de Vil, the ace maiden. You gotta be joking. I had a thing with someone like that once. Ace fool on top. Oh, between the sheets. Oh. You want to curb your vivid imagination, otherwise you're gonna end up having another cold shower. She'd eat you for breakfast and spit out the pips. I'm still not certain it was the right choice for number one, you know. Plain's idea. Don't worry. It's all mouth. Maybe a bit too much mouth. Which could explain him walking into that door. Aye, oh, well, that's all been sorted out now. That's all Crane says. Look, if you know who's responsible... Ah, it won't happen again. Let's just say Mr. Watts has learnt his lesson. He came in here thinking he was Jack the Lad, and everything was different. Now, sir, I've noticed any dramatic change of heart. It'll be all right. Might even be useful. If you say so. Just leave him to me and Mr. Crane. Unless, of course, you're determined to save another soul before you retire. I don't know why you bother. They're all scum. The only difference is some of them you can handle. My, this is an unexpected pleasure. I'm not sure that's quite how I would put it. So what are you doing here, eh? Were you just passing? Thought you might pop in and see what you wanted to put in my stocking for Christmas? I just wanted to see how you were. Oh, how very thoughtful of you. I've been banged up for three months and all of a sudden you decided to find out how I am. You should have been here a few weeks ago. I wasn't too well then. Still, you know all about that, don't you? I suppose your get well card got lost in the post. Things are all right for you now, aren't they? Oh, great. You've never been better. Good. I'm number one now. Got to sell all to myself. Wall to wall with bog rolls and white winds up. Feel like I've come up on the pools. Just so long as you've been well looked after. So what you doing here? I do. Cobblers. I want to be sure you're not going to blow it. So why would I do that after what I've been through? Mm, it would be stupid. So you're going to tell me what's going on? Oh, silly question. No one tells me what's going on. I don't think I can't find out even in here. Don't start getting clever, Dan. You've got a cushy, you've got an easy ride. You don't rock the boat. Greenie, I want to work with you. Your wish is my command, oh great one. There you go, mate. Don't uh, use it all at once. So we're speaking again, are we? Aye. You seem to be avoiding me like the plague since your promotion. We weren't exactly the best of pals before then. Hardly my fault, sweetie. You never gave yourself a chance to get to know me. We could have been bosom pals. Look, I'm not planning to ask you to jump into bed with me right now, all right? I just think maybe, just maybe, we could help each other out. I've been trying to tell you that for ages. So what suddenly made the penny drop, eh? Uh, don't tell me, let me guess. You're in bother. I don't know, but it's one or two things that just don't add up. 
Well, tell your Auntie Queen all about it. All right. When I was in judication, Squeaky kept dropping hints about faces who weren't too happy with the Vinicums. Then West starts throwing names at me I don't even know, and all of a sudden I get a visit from my ex-governor of the wine bar out of the blue. All very Agatha Christie. And it doesn't just add up. It could be something, it could be nothing. Then again, it could be someone trying to fit me up. So what do you want from me? I want some answers, because you reckon you've got it stored in that turgid little brain of yours. So about time you put your money where your mouth is. I don't think you've got the system quite sussed yet, Dennis. No. I certainly can do something for you. I'll be back when I've worked out what you can do for me. Now, pal, I'm having a break, all right? Hello, Barnsley. Oh, where's the new cellmate eating it? <laughs> I get food poisoning, a little snake. He's down in the welfare and the psychiatrist this afternoon. I'm surprised you haven't met him yet. Right, little whinger. He'll be putting in applications every other minute. I only hope one's for a new cell. Well, I'm sure you could persuade him. I'll give him every chance to settle in, then if he don't shut his mouth, he's out. Oh, things not going too well, then? Better with you and me. We got on. Yeah, I'm only down the landing, mate. I'm thinking of taking on art classes. Oh, do me a favour. You never struck me as a budding Picasso. Haven't you heard? The girl that takes it's a right little cracker. Cut glass accent. Skirts up to her waist. Low slung sweater. Yeah, for what's your blood pressure, mate? Yeah. Still, I'm sure you didn't come round here to have small talk with me. What do you want, then? I'm out, mate. Just popped in for a chat with an old friend. All right, as soon as you're asked, there is a favour I'd like you to do for me. I thought so. Seems there's something happening in the big wide world that could jeopardise my future. Queenie knows the SP, but it's going to cost me to get it, and I wouldn't trust her as far as I could throw her. We have good reason for that, don't we? Yeah, and if someone's fitting me up, Queenie gets his head kicked in. So I can rely on you? It'd be a pleasure. Queenie, I've already written a letter to Mary Casablanca complaining. That teacher's no better than she should be. Naked flesh from all accounts. You men, you're all the same. Was that it then? She's gonna govern it for good luck. Come on, Claire Trevor. Move your butt. Ignore him, Trev. Must make you feel better knowing there's someone in here lower down the scale than you, eh? And is the art class going to be graced with your presence, Claire? You must be joking. The teacher's under 35. Ah, oh, Trevor here prefers them over 85, don't you? And here you are, mighty man. Oh, by the way, you're not meant to eat the tray. Well, not in one mouthful. That art teacher's really going to like you, Nicholas. She's really into skinny wimps who think they're Marlon Brando. Definitely not as generous as the previous incumbent. That's because of your special relationship. I don't need a minder. He might do one day. I'm sure Barnes will apply for the job. Have you heard anything yet? Smoke signals from the big outside world? Bits and bobs. Don't make any sense yet. Depends on what it's worth, then. I'm mean, sure for a price I could start putting two and two together. Have you worked out a price yet? Nearly. You're not the only one who likes upfront money in a neat little bank account. I'll let you know. Does she mean? I don't know. She keeps dropping snippets into the conversation, wetting the appetite for bigger things to come. It's all a wind-up. She's worse than the old built with playing cat and mouse. But she's not the only one to play the waiting game. Because when the time's right, Queenie's going to get enough rope to hang everybody in this dump. It's a social call, Governor. No, I don't make social calls. No, of course you don't. That's my mistake. You uh, just make yourself available, huh? do I? Yeah, yeah. Ears and eyes just wait for someone to drop right in it, eh? Who's to say? Well, a good copy has to think that I can't. Anyway, that's the way I'll read it. Oh, bear it in mind. What else should we read, Mr. Butcher? Well, let's have a look here. Festive season, too much booze, slips of the tongue. How am I doing so far? You're an intelligent man. Well, I don't really go. I just get off the telly, don't I? It's just a game of cat and mouse for you, boy, isn't it? Personally, I like to come straight out with things, out front. You know what I mean? Of course. It means you want to ask me a question. Fire away. <laughs> What's the latest on Dennis Watts? Not a lot. Uh, but, of course, if he's found guilty, the wine bar will be looking for a new licensee. Yeah, shame, man. And there again, the police and certain other parties might choose to oppose a new licence. Well, 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 you, uh... You don't make social calls, do you, Governor? Not even at Christmas. Let me see you out, young man. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. My pleasure. See you again, sir. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Oh, well, well, well. Hmm. 
Here, Frank, what do you reckon? I've got Simon to do these. He's more artistic than what I am. Oh, it's a bit previous, babe, isn't it? It's the best way. There's not much to celebrate round here. Most people are dreading it. Not me, babe. It's our first, remember? If we make an effort, we can make it like the old days. I'd like that, Frank. Yeah. Stockings for the kids, you know, paper hats. Snogging under the mistletoe, sing songs round the piano. Do you know what I remember most about being a kid, man? What? It was during the war when all the streets were dark. And the old family, except down, of course, would go from party to party. And you'd come out of a blackout street into a room with a light hurt your eyes. And the ceilings were smothered in those paper giants with those big coloured bells, man. <laughs> What's this? Feed drinks? Are you shot? You out your brains, babe? We might as well do it now. Make it spontaneous. Then the regulars will get wind of it and nobody much else. Who's a clever girl, then? If it takes off tonight, every night from now till New Year, we'll be party night at the Vic. It's going to be a bonanza Christmas. It's a nice one, eh, Frank? Ain't it just? Listen, babe, we're going to go down the uh, cash and carry. Simon, would you exercise the keys for us on the mail, Sam? Yeah, all right. Hey, look, one short. How about Cindy's in a stint behind here in future? Fell up like with strokes, is she? Yeah. What do you reckon, Frank? Yeah, that's all right by me, babe. Chances are she'll be out of a job anyway. How do you make that? She's a good bar, mate. Well, the rumour has it that the days of the wine bar are numbered. Who told you that? No, well, we're not exactly, but uh, the more I think about it, the sooner we get the welcome out by the door, the better. Darling, you are a genius. Interested in art, what? Ever since he started scribbling on lavatory walls. I'm just trying to improve my mind, take advantage of the educational facilities on offer, that's all. Pay for it great expense out of taxpayers' money, Mr. Stone. Wouldn't be anything to do with the fact that the art teacher is a female. Oh, no, no one told me that. No, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> Feeding time at the zoo. Now let's treat the lady with the respect of her sex deserves. Yeah. Isn't Santa Claus usually a man? Oh, I thought it was more original. Oh, is that all right? I quite visualised him in a miniskirt. And doesn't he usually dress in red? Or is this your blue period? Oh, yeah. Most definitely that. It's a Christmas tree. So it is. Very nice too. And, and them's the presents. And that's a wounded robin. I used to look full forward to Christmas when I was a kid. We all used to sit around the tree and his staff would bring us presents. And one of them would dress up as Father Christmas. Well, you haven't done very much, have you? I've been too busy looking at you. Right, little do-gooder, ain't you, eh? All the lads banged up in here and you're doing your Christian duty. Load of old fanny. What's the matter? Ain't the boys outside hungry enough for you? I met some scrubbers, darling, but they can't hold a candle to you, because neath that cut glass accent, you're a right little tart. So once you toddle off home, eh? Have a sleepless night thinking about what you didn't get. Because me, for one, ain't going to give it a second thought. You've left the fairy off the top of the Christmas tree. Oh, Cindy, you call OK? I'll wait for Michelle. I don't want to miss her. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Hello, Cathy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd yeah. just like to say that this is Mum and Frank's first Christmas here, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I'd like to be the first to wish them both a Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope it's the first of many pies, all right? Thank you. Listen, what we're about it, let's raise our glasses to absent friends. Yeah. Yeah. Then what's for yeah. work? Yeah. And then Hinch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget Lou, God bless yeah. her. Yeah. 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 And Tom. Yes. And my name. And my name. Give us a call, son, will you? Remember this one? Memories. Memories. Yeah. Memories. Yeah. Memories. Kathy, look at me. It's all right, I promise you. Oh, please, God, let me I'll die, put my hands please, in my please. pockets. Kathy, look, I won't touch you. Now, listen to me. No. 
You can't do this to me, Kathy. It's been a terrible mistake. You went wrong somewhere, and all this nonsense has been a horrible nightmare. Oh, God. We'll go somewhere quiet, and I'll make you understand. Come on, Kathy. She's not going anywhere. You, you bugger off. You ruin our life, and then you come back and torment her all over again. One whiff of you in this square, and I'll finish you, I'll see to that. Are you deaf? I said clear off! Now, as for you, enough is enough. We're going to the police. No, sure, I can't go for that again. Well, maybe you can't, but I want that man. It's locked away once and for all. I'll drop you at Pete's, and then I'll go to police myself. No one's going to stop me now. Yes, gents. Use your morning yeah. refreshment, is it? Yes, please, Pat. Yeah. No work today? Well, a staff Christmas party, isn't it? Well, Ali and Mehmet Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, that sounds more like it. Yeah, yeah. And if you think it's so busy this time of the day, do you? Well, perhaps everybody's decided to have their staff Christmas parties at the same time. Why, well, are you complaining? Yeah. You'll never hear me complain while I'm taking lots of lovely lollies. You could be making a lot more of that if you'd open up in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah well, he won't, will he? Simon. What was Donna doing round here as soon as the doors was open? Oh, you sure? Have a go at Oh, yeah? What's up now? We just heard about Cindy coming to work here. Brings a bit of her the elbows, so it's a bit of line her own pockets. Silly care. Car out, and there you go. How about it, Frank? The last time, fellas, the answer is no! What's that? What's that stone that Lou gave me, remember? I thought we'd put it on shows and just have those Christmas without it. They minds think alike. Yeah, Dane, fancy a game? Got to be better company than old Egon Ron here, eh? Yeah, sure. Uh, Barnsley was just gonna make a cup of tea anyway. Oh, yeah. All he ever does is moan. You shared a cell with him. You must know what it's like. That's why that excess weight he's carrying around with him. Don't underestimate him. He can roll himself into a ball and steamroll you. Yeah, hey, don't scare me. All that weight just slows you down. He might not be the fastest, I grant you. But who needs to be fast when you're fast asleep in your bed? He could crush your skull with his thumb. Don't you worry about it, Ben. Barnsley won't put one over on me. Still the hard man, eh? I don't remember being this hard when you were turfed out of Albert Square. And if my memory serves me right, it was twice. First, you got a good kicking from the ethnic minority, and secondly, I made you an offer in my pub that you couldn't refuse. I either get out of Woolford or end up propping up the motorway. Yeah, well, I wasn't thinking straight in those days, was I? All that stuff I was on did my brain. I don't make those sort of mistakes now. Kick the habit, eh? Yeah, knocks it on the head. Mugs game. Yeah, well, you can't be too careful, can you? Not with AIDS and all that. Come in up. Come in up. Ian into the business, the pip squeak. Yeah, look, all of 14. Hello. Just because he's got his sitting in gills, he thinks he knows it all. Whereas he knows not. Yeah. <laughs> It'd not collapse with him on the gym, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, OK. Sorry. Uh, no that little pip squeak's got more savvy in his little finger than you've got in the your bodies. That's a bit strong, Pat. Yeah, well, you watch out for Ian. He'll surprise us all one day. Yeah, thanks, Pat. All right, don't tell me. I was whinging on because I left him to do all the work. No, he's up his ladder. Thanks, Kat. You know, Pete, can we have a talk? Is it going to be heavy? No, So, what's it about? I just thought you'd want to know it. And don't go mad or I don't want to ruck or anything. I just think you should know it. I read these letters from Wilmot Brown and then he approached me. When? I just thought you should know. He's written to me and then he tried to talk to me. And the police know all about it because he's broken his bowel conditions. I just wish you'd come and see me first, OK? I wanted to. So why didn't you? I was a bit scared, that's all. about how you'd react. You told me everything, have you? Yeah. Let me open out the way before Christmas. There you go, Jane. Here. See Pat, where my mum's boat. Well, well, well. Well, you could knock me down with a cockney sparrow. Old pie and mashed face herself. Backbone of the East End. Old mother courage. Pat, I was expecting. Even Sharon would have knocked me off my perch. It'd have been Anne's that had turned up. Then again, it could have been Jan, couldn't it? Home at Christmas and holiday. But surprise, surprise, who do I get lumber with? Good old Pauline Fowler. What's the matter? Feel sorry for me? Got a fit of the community spirits, have you? Because you always were such a family person, weren't you? Must be the time of the year, eh? Feeling maternal? Well, I'm shocked. I'm stunned, Pauline. I'd have thought you were the one person in the world who'd been happy to see me banged up. Hmm? Best Christmas I've ever had, Dennis. Best present I've ever had. 
You're all wrapped up in pretty paper and a big red bow and banged up in here out the way of decent people. Oh, you know all about that, wouldn't you? Decent people. The wife of a convicted criminal. I'm only on remand, Paul, then. I haven't been found guilty of anything yet. Anyway, how is Arthur? Still fiddling the sauce, is he? Because he must have a lot on his mind this time of year. Drawn the Christmas club money out yet, have you? And how's that wayward son of yours? I thought Christmas was about families. I feel sorry for you. Well, don't. Well, I can't help it, can I? You've got the burdens of the old world on your shoulders. Even more so now old Lou's gone. Ah, oh, first Christmas without her. How are you going to manage, eh? Same as you, I expect. Doing all the planning, the shopping, the cooking and the preparation. And if you're lucky, someone might smile at you. I doubt very much if they'll thank you. You won't even get a present from Arthur. He's never got two apenies to rub together. But you're used to it, aren't you? Just grin and bear it. That's why I feel sorry for you. I think I prefer to be in my prison rather than yours. At least I'll get out after my trial. Anyway, did you bring any presents with you? Any fags? No. Now you've had your say, and I have mine. Oh, you sound just like Lou, then. I don't have to stay here and listen to this, you know. You see that nice, kindly screw over there? I can always go up to him and ask him to take me back to my land. Will you do that, Dennis? And I'll be straight round to Sharon to tell the truth about you, Michelle, and Vicky. Decided to say, have you? Know what side your bread's buttered? I don't have to justify my family to anyone. But just for the record, I'd rather spend a lifetime in prison with them than 30 seconds anywhere near the likes of you. You're like a disease, Dennis Watts. You're like AIDS, and there's no cure for that. And unless we protect ourselves, you pollute others. Or Sharon's my protection against you. And I'll use her if I have to, to protect my family when I don't make hollow threats. You step out of line, just quarter of an inch, and I'll be round to her faster than you can say, Lou Beal. Mum always said it was good for you to know you was being watched. I'm doing the watching now. I thought you'd be out of arm's way once she was banged up in here, but I was wrong. You can still reach us, even from prison. That little stroke you pulled with a Christmas present for the flat, love, den. I can see through your little games. It was a message, wasn't it, to keep you in the frame. So every time Michelle sits down with Vicky to watch Super Ted and turns on the TV, she'll be thinking of you. You destroy people's lives, Dennis. I've watched them all falling like flies. Well, you're not going to destroy my family. Not one of them. I've given you plenty of chances, plenty of warnings. This is the last. What time have you seen David, then? Uh, I'll call seven at the wine bar. Are you sure you don't mind looking after that little monster? Yeah, of course not. Don't Do you think it's going to be normal this year? What? Christmas. I have a habit of being a bit dramatic in Albert Square. Yeah, uh, what's new? You know, Gran used to say to me, if you've lived in Albert Square during Christmas during the Blitz and everything else is a piece of cake. Do you miss that? Yeah, more than I thought. I mean, she drove everyone up the wall, but she was nearly always right. She had her head screwed on, probably, you know what I mean? I wonder what your mum's going to be doing. Yeah, Christmas in the sunshine. I bet she and Sonny decorate the bar like it's here. And invite around all the expats for roast turkey. I know when she'll probably have a good cry and all. What about your dad? About her entire life, probably. Out of it in the north. And what his Christmas is going to be like? Banged up in that place with no visitors. Like the ones I used to Oh, I mean, listen to that queen here. They're sticking on the top of the tree in Trafalgar Square. Well, Mrs. Was it? By the racket, well, I was expecting. It's going to take a rolling pin to you any minute. That thing was not my missus, and it's none of your business. So who was it then? It's none of your business either. Never used to be so touchy, then. Don't kid yourself, I've always been touchy. Just because we're on the same roof doesn't mean to say we're mates. I always thought you were a greasy little toe rag, and I've found nothing since to make me change my mind. Well, you weren't exactly Mother Teresa yourself, were you? No. I've always looked after number one, I grant you. But my methods were never as unsavoury as yours, and I always cover my tracks. Not like you. Your head's so screwed up, you left the trailer clues as wide as a road cat's eyes. Well, what's that supposed to mean? What a business with Red's Cox. Yeah, well, got away with that, didn't I? Just. I remember we went missing. It's the Packies who discovered it. It's me, Ali. This week's songs of praise come from the cell of Michael Queenie Price, guest of Her Majesty the Queen. Thank you. <laughs> oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, 
out of the gutter, up to the level of Trevor, then you're allowed to look at me. And when you've hauled yourself up a rung or two, say to the level of Barnsley, then you're allowed to talk, but only if you're very polite. And when you've reached the giddy heights of number one or a screw, then and only then are you allowed to take the mic off. This is your lucky day, Nick. You're still breathing. And I'm not fat, you cow. <laughs> Cretin, you ought to be on sea landing with the rest of the Fenn Brigade. Every wing's got to have its queen, Nick. Yeah. Reminds me of that fruit in Albert Square. What's Colin, what's his name? Wimp. Oh, is that the same wimp that tossed you out of Dot's flat? Pure fluke. What's the matter? Didn't you pour enough scots down his throat? Here, you've been in Wolfram more recently than me, Dan. How is the old dump? Dagmar burnt down. Oh, yeah. All the yuppies inside it, were they? No. <laughs> Wilmot Brown? No. Nah. <laughs> Doubt if he's even missed. Kathy Bill got raped. Oh, yeah. Makes an habit of that sort of thing, doesn't she? Good old Wolford. Nothing ever changes, eh? Yeah, I think that's about the lot. It's only you talking about your range. Had another ruck with her? Nah. Divorce, mate. Persuaded a mate of mine to ride off into the sunset with her to Spain. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't hear you talking about Doc. Well, sent her a letter. Gave her a list of gear I want bringing in. She'd get it in a couple of days. I suppose she'll be spending their usual Christmas with Lou and Ethel. Oh, is that the same Ethel that kicked you in the ghoulies and turfed you out of her flat? Oh, yeah. Lou Bill snuffed it. <laughs> Good rinse to the old bag. Still, makes no difference. Albert Square will still be the same sentimental lot of old rhubarb. Makes you thankful to be in here, doesn't it? Just think. Christmas in Albert Square, no Lou Bill. Got to be thankful for small mercies, I suppose. I don't know. Pauline's still there. Just look out on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When the poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. And here the page comes down by me, where and once you're dwelling, on the peasant who is he, where and what's his dwelling? Sunny lives a goodly hence, underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence, by St. Agnes Mountain. Yes, Pa. your game, huh? No way I don't have to listen to you filling your face as if you don't have any food. From now on, I eat your meals, right? You can't do that! Can't I? What are you gonna do to stop me? As a matter of fact, I'd like to know, what are you gonna do to stop <laughs> I wasn't aware I had one. Your excel mate, Mr. Cheerful, is giving me a real hard time. Can't you take a lay off? No one can tell Barnsley that. He's his own man. I wouldn't like to be in the firing line when he loses his temper. So I'm afraid you're on your own, old son. You hang on. Listen, if it really is that bad, yeah. you could always apply to change yourself. Why do I go about doing that? You speak to the number one, and that's me. Well? Well, I'm speaking to you, ain't I? Yes, I heard you. Is that your car outside? You know it is. Front offside tyres are a bit warm. Thank you. I'll get it checked now, if you don't mind. Oh dear, too late. Your friendly neighbourhood policeman has noticed. Oh well, three points and a fine. It's not too much to worry about. Well done. Though I hardly think you'll get a mention in the Police Gazette. Not from Little Acorns and all that, you know. You mean if you continue this harassment? Nasty word, that harassment. Are you suggesting that I'm harassing you? Yes. I see. A very serious allegation. It is. 
And I feel duty bound to advise you that we have a section that deals with such matters. A little branch that devotes itself to justice, as we all do. This branch is very thorough. They investigate the minutest detail, all the whys and wherefores. They usually end up knowing more about the complainant than the complainant knows about themselves. As I say, very thorough. I could put them in touch with you if you like. No? Oh well. All in good time. I always like to be of service. Oh, by the way, I hear one of your young ladies is leaving. Giving a notice. Cindy, is it? That of interest to you, is it? Or is it just your way of showing me the extent of your interest in this place? Yeah, you strike me as a very thorough sort of person. The type who would rummage around in other people's garbage cans. Oh, talking of garbage cans, has Brad not turned up yet? You really should be careful who you work with. I could write a book on friend Brad. Oh, don't get me wrong, I love people like him. He's sort of done no end of good for my promotion possibilities. What do you want? You mentioned garbage. No one likes garbage around the place. Have you ever considered moving? Yeah, moving. Got your accommodation problem sorted out. Nick Cotton's asked for cell change. I've got a very nice surprise up my sleeve for him. <laughs> Any more from her? Nah, uh, she's been as quiet as a grave. Still doing her Tom and Jerry act, but today's the day. What day is that, then? The day she gets enough rope. And don't ask me out, because at least you know the better. You're turning up like a bad penny, Vicar. Joke. <laughs> you wouldn't believe this, but I used to be a famous joker. Life and soul of the party type. You want the evening to go with a swing? Make sure you invite Vic. <laughs> I've been thinking. To tell you the truth, I've been doing nothing else. When they get my results, and when they come through, should be any minute now, I prefer it if you tell me. Are you sure? I'm sure. You've thought this all the way through, then? I told you, thinking's all I've had to do in here. You should have had proper counselling. Yeah, yeah, proper, said. lengthy counselling from experts. So you'd have been alerted to all the uh, possible outcomes. I've had to do that for myself, haven't I? Hiya. Old monkey didn't want to come home. She wanted to stay with her gran and granddad. Oh. She's got all her presents out on the floor, bless her. You all right? Yeah. Michelle, do you reckon I should take that 500 quid to go and visit me mum? Well, that's why I done left it for you. Yeah, I know, but all that mouthing off about how I wouldn't touch it and all that. Well, I feel like a hypocrite, you know? Oh, shush. We all say things, don't we? Anyway, you should go and see your mum. Maybe she won't want to see me. Oh, maybe pigs will fly. She'll be all over you, Sharon, and you'll be all over her. But I don't know what's the matter with you. All right, Den's not a saint, but, but I think you did the right thing by leaving you that money. Go on, give the guy a chance. You think a lot of me, Dad, don't you? Yeah, I like him. Here, Shell. Do you remember when we was kids and he was going to take us out? And I got all flash and wouldn't go unless he bought me a new dress. I ended up in my room all day and he took you out and bought you a new dress. I remember. <laughs> you must have hated me. Oh, no. I got two new dresses the next day. And I didn't stay in my room all day. Mum sort of that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Sport brat, that's what I was. Sometimes I think I still am. Sometimes. What do you mean? Well, you said it. Had a good time that day, didn't you? So did, as a matter of fact. Oh, I saw you smirking when I couldn't come. You had him all to yourself. And I know he gave you a kiss when he dropped you off because I was watching from the window. You looking up to him all lovey-dovey. Oh, well, you see, I know. That's why he gave me that kiss. How old were we then, eh? Six or seven? Yeah, it's a bit stupid, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I made him promise never to kiss you again. Oh, too late. I was at over in love with him. Are you joking? Yes, I'm joking. Oh, I don't know. Some girls go for the father figure, the older man. How old would you say your doctor is? Oi, Queenie. In here. Something matter? No, I just thought you might have fancy tea for two. Well, I did the Ritz, is it, dear? Yeah, it's better than being in a cell on your own. You call the ladies first. So, what's the real reason for you inviting me here today? You can't believe you're on the turn. I'm not. So, you've sorted out some suitable payment for me, have you? Uh, for any information I can give you on your friends on the outside? Maybe. Better be worth my while. Yeah, well, I'm working on it. All depends what visitors I get in the next couple of days. But I'll keep you informed. You know, remind me of a bloke I used to know. Greedy Dunlop, we used to call him. What's in it for me was his motto. It's a man after your own heart. I think I know him. No, I doubt it. I don't think you know everyone. I mean, after all, you were recruited in here, and I can't see Johnny Harris giving you the gen on all my Walford friends. Uh, maybe not. Just thought the name rang a bell, that's all. Yeah, well, if you'd have met him, you'd remember him. He's what you might call colourful. He ran the Essex part of the mob. Handled the drug distribution. Got very upset once when Mr V and company paid up very late. 
steamed in a wolf and team handed like Al Capone. Only thing that was missing was the violin case. Yes, I want you out. I do not want to even be within the same four walls as a creep like you. Got it? Yeah, well, I'm not sure drug which is the sort of company I want to keep since you ask. Just one more crack out of you, Callow. One more crack. Changing your cell today, eh? Barnsley finally got you under his thumb. And you look surprised. Even the likes of me get your landing gossip. So you proved you're too wheezy to stand up to him. That just leaves me, eh? Right. Oh! You ask for it. Friendly word of advice. Number one, likes to run a tidy landing, a tight ship. Violence only blocks my cough book. To leave clever Trevor alone. Getting soft in your old age then? Go easy. If I hear just rumour of aggravation, I'll end up turning you upside down and using you as a toilet brush. 